So let's have a look at how we arrive at that futures price. We've already uh, given, I've already given you the formula for the the, the futures price. Uh, that being that the futures price is S not uh, e to the r minus r f t. But how do we get there? Uh, and how do we prove that that's right using an arbitrage argument with currencies? And that's uh, it's a little bit difficult to do. What we have to do is set up two scenarios and argue that those two scenarios must be equal otherwise there's an arbitrage opportunity so what are we going to do we're going to convert a thousand canadian dollars into u.s dollars and no matter which way we convert it they must be identical otherwise we have an arbitrage opportunity so the first thing we can do is we have a thousand canadian dollars well let's take those thousand dollars and exchange them at whatever the spot price is there that 1,000 S naught, there's my US dollars. I can convert at whatever the spot price is. And over some period of time, T, that those US dollars will grow at the US rate of return, R, for the period T. So at some point in the future, if I start with 1,000 Canadian, I can end up with US dollars. So U.S. dollars in the future, I'll convert whatever the spot rate is and whatever U.S. dollars I'll get will grow at the risk-free rate for that period of time. Great. The other way that I can do it is to say, I'm going to leave the $1,000 in Canadian dollars. I'm going to invest it at RF for that period of time. At the same time I do that, I am going to sell one futures contract at whatever the futures price is. Now keep in mind, all we're doing is we're using an arbitrage argument to prove this formula. So to prove this formula, it must at some point introduce the futures contract itself and see what price falls out of it. So let's say that we're going to sell at F0, whatever F0 is, whether it's priced right or wrong. Our, th our thousand Canadian dollars will grow in Canadian. So at some future point, we will have 1,000 E to the R, F, T Canadian dollars. And we will then convert those Canadian dollars into U.S. dollars at whatever price we negotiated for or whatever price we paid for the forward or futures contract uh, at the inception of the contract. Now, F is quoted in US dollars. So we're taking Canadian, multiplying it by the US equivalent of each of those dollars, which will give us US dollars. So for F naught to equal this term in here, this amount must be equal to this amount. Converting the US dollars now and having it grow at the US rate must be the same as having the thousand dollars grow at the Canadian rate and then converting it to a price on the same day that we observe S naught, we can calculate F naught, converting it at that price and having it grow. They must be the same. If they're not, if they're different, one can see an arbitrage opportunity right away because all of a sudden we can do we can go both ways. One will be more valuable than the other, even though they're the same thing. That's a riskless profit. So because they must be equal, let's continue with that. We have an equality written as 1,000 e to the r f t times f naught must equal 1,000 s naught e to the r t. First thing we can do, I think you see, is that we can divide through by 1,000 to get rid of that mess. We'll be left e to the r f t f naught equals s naught e the RT. Uh, we can divide through now by E to the RFT, which will leave F naught, which is S naught E R T, divided by E R F T. Well, that's a little messy down there, right? Well, we just have to remember from high school math, right? Since X to the Y divided by X to the Z equals X to the y minus z, we can now solve for in here by just writing it out a little bit differently. F naught equals S naught e to the r t minus r f t. 
we're just minus, we just uh, uh, e over e. Uh, we just have to subtract the power terms. And now we can simplify. T is a common element for both, so s not e. In brackets, we'll have r minus r f and bring t to the outside. And does that equal what we have? Yes, it does. So we have shown that whichever way we go with the exchange, convert it now and have it grow, or have it grow then convert it later at f naught, f naught is a number, is a value such that these two alternatives must be equal. We must end up with the same money both ways, and we have proven that this formula is the result of the equality of, of, of these two amounts. So let's do an example under, uh, under currencies, and we'll also draw out the arbitrage opportunity. And uh, when we're doing arbitrage with, uh, uh, with currencies to, pr to, set the, to prove the futures price, it's not as simple as, uh, as what it first looks like. But again, I'm going to give you an easy way to do it. So we observe the Aussie.us spot price at 0 0.6200. That's spot. That's what we can get right now. The um, central bank, the Royal Bank of Australia, has, uh, uh, sorry, the Reserve Bank of Australia, I always call it the Royal Bank, I don't know, the RBA, has short-term interest rates in Australia set at 5%. The Federal Reserve in the U.S. has short-term interest rates set at 7%. And we're looking at a two-year forward contract. So it is uh, uh, fairly straightforward to write out our formula, S not E, remember it's R minus RF, T, and simply substitute in the variables 0.62 e to the 0 0.07 minus 0 0.05 times two years 0 0.6453. So there we go. That's uh, that's an easy way to figure it out. We're looking at a currency as having a known yield. Where do we find the yield? The short-term interest rate uh, set by the central bank of the foreign country. Well, we're in a position to say some interesting things here. So let's see, let's see what we can say here. So what if the central bank rate was equal to the uh, Australian central bank rate? Well, look what happens in, in the power term. Let's say they were both 7%. 0 0.07 minus 0 0.07 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. E to the 0. In fact, anything to the 0 is just 1. It would be 0.62. So there's a powerful statement we can make. When the interest rates of two countries are identical, when their short-term rates are identical, the future price will also be the spot price. Think about that for a minute. The future price will be the spot price. If the domestic interest rate uh, is greater than the foreign interest rate, I've already mentioned this, the futures price will be greater than the spot price. If the uh, current uh, domestic interest rate is less than the foreign interest rate, the futures price will be less than the spot price, simply because of what happens in the power term. Uh, uh, that, that will be the natural conclusion. So we have three pretty good statements here that we can observe a futures and a spot rate. And depending on where the future price is versus the spot rate, we can tell if interest rates are the same, if interest rates are higher, or if interest rates are lower uh, in one country versus in the other. And depending on the distance of the spread, um, the, the difference between the futures price and the spot price, we can tell how far apart those rates happen to be. Maybe they both have uh, rates, as of right now, rates set near zero. Maybe they have, both have rates set near 8%, with one at 7.75 and one at 7.85. Well, that would give a futures price very, very close to the spot price as well on both of them because it is the difference that matters, right? Well, let's make our arbitrage argument for, um, to, to prove that this holds. So what if... Let's just put our scenario down. What if the futures price was actually less than the derivation of, uh, of the futures price itself, R minus RF to the T? What if it were less than that? Well, what's our rule? Buy low, sell high. What's the lower side here? 
Well, look at the, what the sign is pointing to. F0 is less than that, so our futures price is low. And the future value of the spot based on that is high. So since that is low, we know we're going to be buying the futures contract at that price. And since we're buying the futures contract at that price, we must be selling the underlying. Well, what is the underlying of this contract? The underlying is Australian dollars. It's an Australian dollar futures contract with, with a particular exchange rate uh, that we've figured out here. So the underlying is Australian dollars. So we must be short Australian dollars. Well, how do we short Australian dollars? Well, we borrow them. That's a loan. Whenever you borrow money, you're short those dollars. So since we bought F0, we're going to borrow 1,000 Australian dollars. So I think that's fairly easy to get to. All we have to do is say, I'm going to buy low and sell high. What am I buying? I'm buying the futures contract. That's the lower side of that inequality. What am I selling? I'm selling uh, uh, the underlying asset. What's the underlying asset? Australian dollars. How do I short a currency? I borrow it. I'm short the currency. Well, what do I do now? Well, remember, there are two things we can do when we have a sum of foreign money. Number one is we can invest that money since we're borrowing. This will then grow. $1,000 will grow at E to the RFT at some future price. And then we can take 1000 e to the rft times the futures price because that's what we're we're locking it in at and we're going to assume since f is less than s not uh, that it's 0.63 so we can do it this way or we can convert at the spot price and what's the spot price 0.62 so we can take our thousand dollars and convert it at 0.62 we'll get 620 usd and we can then invest that 620 USD at e to the R T. So given that we have 0.63, what will this grow to? This will this will be our loan, and our loan will grow to 1105.17. But we can now buy at six every every US dollar we have. We only need 63 cents of it to make up one Australian dollar. So if we multiply this by 0.63, it'll tell us at how many US dollars we need. And this side will grow to $696.26. So we will need 696.20 USD. Well, what does the other side grow to? 620 invested at this rate for that period of time will grow to $713.17. Ah, look at that. So we borrowed the $1,000. Um, now that we know which two ways we can go, we want to go to the, the, the route that has the higher value. There it is. So we'll borrow this, the $1,000. We'll invest it. We'll convert it at the spot price. Invest the $620. End up with $713.17. Our $1,000 loan will grow to 1105.17, but since the futures exchange rate that we locked in, 0.63, multiply that out, we need 696.26. We have $713 to pay off the 696.26. We win. Isn't that nice? Well, what if it were the other way around? Let's, uh, let's look at what happens. Um, what if the futures price is greater than what we can calculate for it on minus rf to the t and we'll say that it is a 0.66 we'll say f naught is 0.66 well um, we do the same thing uh, the same logic that we applied we buy low sell high so what's the higher side of this inequality it's f naught so we know that we're going to short a futures contract at f naught if we're going to short a futures contract, we must be long the underlying. What's the underlying? Australian dollars. Well, how do we get long Australian dollars? Well, we got to buy them. We got to buy some Australian dollars. But we don't have Australian dollars. We have U.S. dollars. So we have to say, well, how many U.S. dollars do I need today to buy a thousand uh, Australian dollars? 
Well, if I want 1,000 Australian dollars and the spot price is 0.62, it's simply 1,000 divided by the exchange rate of, of, of um, point, or sorry, multiplied by the exchange rate of 0.62, I'm going to need 620 US dollars. If I have 620 US dollars, I can buy 1,000, I now have 1,000 Australian dollars. Beautiful. So what am I going to do with that 1,000 Australian dollars? Well, of course, now that I own, now that I'm long Australian dollars, I'm not just going to let them sit there. They will grow at E to the RFT, which means that that, we've already figured out what that is. That's 1105.17. So at time T, I have 1105.17 Australian dollars. But what do I want Australian dollars for, right? What do I need Australian dollars for? I want them back in U.S. dollars. Well, look at this. I'm short a futures contract. That was the beautiful thing about it, right? I'm short a futures contract, which means I must take delivery, or sorry, I must deliver the underlying. I must deliver the underlying, and at what rate? 0.66. So how many... Uh, how many U.S. dollars will I get? Because I'm long the 11.05. If I multiply it by 0.66, this will give me 729.41. So I got $729.41 U.S. Uh, by converting, by taking, some, by buying some Australian dollars, having it grow to a certain rate, and then locking in that exchange rate to bring it back into U.S. But I got a problem, don't I? My $620 loan in U.S. dollars has grown at the rate of RT. Well, we've already figured that out. Over here is $713.17. 729 It's better than 713 So under both of these scenarios, there's an arbitrage opportunity. So when the futures price is too low, there'll be borrowing in Australian dollars. When you borrow Australian dollars and convert them into U.S., you must sell the Aussie to buy the U.S. It would put downward pressure on the spot price uh, to meet a lower futures price. If, on the other hand, we find that the futures price is greater than the spot price, we would start with U.S. dollars, which would then be converted to Australian dollars, so we'd have to buy Aussie dollars in the spot market, thereby pushing up the price of the Australian dollar in the spot market to come up to the level of the futures price. So because there is the ability and the willingness to engage in arbitrage when the futures price is too low on a currency and when it's too high on a currency, the arbitrage argument itself proves the relationship between the futures price, the spot price, the, the differential between the two countries' interest rates, and the time to maturity.